to practice, yeah? Hello, you're watching CGTN live streaming. I'm Jenny Cortez Ibanez, and today we are here at the Tsinghua University in Beijing at the Academy of Arts and Design for a very special exhibition. It opened last Monday, and today is actually the final day, so we get to tour around this exhibition and, uh, and see what uh, they've been up to. So let's go that way, and then we're going to start walking and then follow, yeah? And then just, I'm going to be saying, look at this, look at that, so just tell them to follow <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and now we're going to be introducing you to my tour guide for today Betty who's a second year PhD student here at this university and also one of the artists for today and then we go in and then we turn right we're just practicing and let's meet my tour guide today we have the lovely Betty hello Betty how are you hi Jenny hi how are you doing Thank you very much for doing this with us. So Betty is not only a second year student, but she's also one of the artists uh, for one of the art uh, installation pieces that we're going to see, uh, see today, later on. So watch out for that. But let's start off, Betty. So you'll probably, best way is always to be on my, on my right. Yeah, mm -hmm. so whenever we move, just, yeah, so that the mm -hmm. camera can always that. follow us mm -hmm. on one side that. and then you're on the other. Mm -hmm. just talk. We only have one mic perspective. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll, I'll yeah. interact with yeah. you. Yeah. And then we'll just follow, 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 follow. Da, 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 da. And where possible, we'll just kind of try not to have our backs to a camera. Which yeah. We always try and follow. And we start here. Blah, 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 blah. And we walk around. Yeah? Good? Yeah, so, okay, so, uh, Betty. <laughs> it's okay. Hi there again. Hello again. <laughs> so, yes, as I mentioned, we're here at the Tsinghua University in Beijing, uh, and we're here at this exhibition. It's a very special exhibition. Tell us why, Betty. Because it's all the new media artifact done by the Tsinghua University students in Fine and Art Department, mostly by the uh, Information and Art Department student. Yeah. But what's more special about it, it's not only about the latest new media technology, yeah. it's every project has a cultural background behind it. So we are trying to preserve and protect the traditional culture by showing them into these exhibitions, yeah. not only by books. So let's just Please. go and okay. see. Yeah. So the first one is going to be about the Imperial Palace. Yes. And there's some information to our Forbidden right city. Here. Oh, sorry. Okay, so start with the Forbidden City. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about this art installation. There are so many um, famous and special, um, let's see, uh, artifacts in Forbidden City. Yeah. So this is a, a very around. famous painting. That one. This is a very famous painting called Han Xi Zai Yan Tu. Basically, it's the emperor ask his painter to go to someone's house to watch how he parties, how he holds his parties. And uh, this il illustration is a very long and big one, and you can see uh, that. Uh, that's how the exhibition or the project shows. Right, so this is the digital version? Yes, the of digital this. version of a uh, paper illustration, very ancient paper uh, painting. Great. But you can interact with it. Amazing, and that's what I'm excited to actually yeah. try out. So we have, first of all, the artist here. Yes. Please come and join us. So let's Hi. talk a little bit. So the, let's turn us around so we can see the art piece. Yeah. So, um, let's so I can I can show you this, and she can explain yes. how oh, so it cool. works. Yeah. Let me just show you. Okay. <laughs> this is like a handle, okay. but you can see there's no lights. But when I travel around this map, it would show different lights. Does it have the effect of this one? Not this one. Wait for yeah, the next okay. one. Wait for two seconds. Okay. But I can see that. This is the handle, but it's a real handle for the painting, not for us, because you can see it now. Okay, so basically this handle, if you move it to the left and move it to the right, see? it moves and changes pictures. Is that correct? Do you got that? Yeah. Because when the handle moves, it's like a real person holds a handle and reads and read this painting. Okay. Like this. Like this. You can see. Okay, let's try it. So from the beginning, so this handle basically, if you bring it with you to we're gonna go straight on. You can see the shadow you can changes. See the shadow changes and the photo changes, right? And the angle changes. Like real oh, so we are cool. seeing a real painting. 
Real painting. Yeah, like we are seeing a real painting. <laughs> and it, if we do that same thing again, walk towards that way, yeah, it it'll will change. change. Because the painting has changed. The painting has two, five parts. And different parts has, have a different way of interaction. Yeah. Yes, I'll help you with that. Yeah. Have to wait it. Have to wait for Going a bit too fast there. <laughs> come and join us, come and join us. Don't be shy. You can see um, what's the real project is not as big as this one, right? Yeah. It's much larger than the original painting. Yeah. Uh, have five, five times larger. Five yeah. times larger than the real painting? This one? I think so. So just for our viewers, we have the actual artist who uh, put this together. So maybe we can translate to Chinese if it's easier. Um, tell us a little bit about the piece, if we can ask her what's her name and what's the inspiration behind this piece. No. Uh, my English name is Ella. Ella? I, don't, I don't know how to explain this. Chinese. Oh, yeah. Han is a very important artist. He is a really important artist. The colleagues work for the emperor. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But he's really important. Yeah. And this is a party in his house, right? Yeah. How he parties. Yeah. And the he's emperor is a little bit envy about it. Yeah. Why to his king that he is a. Um, um, oh, he likes to party. Oh, okay. He's a party yeah. boy. So he's a party about boy, but yeah. uh, it's not true. So uh, the king. Uh, house, uh, a painter, yeah, yeah, yeah. to come to, to his house to look to basically uh, illustrate how he parties yes, at night. Yeah, yes. Amazing. So it's like to peek, to look through a little hole. Yeah, I can, yeah. I can show you. Himself. Okay. Is, uh, and now it's changing. You can see as she holds the handle and uh, walk around, it's like look through a middle of two. Okay. Cool. That's amazing. Thank you so much and congratulations with your art piece. Let's move on to the next one. We have one here. Yes. Actually, last Monday I was able to meet this artist himself uh, again. There's also another student here at this university. And what's really cool about this exhibition, actually, is that most of the work comes from students here. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. So they get to showcase the work to the public and to other professionals, which is pretty exciting. So, hello. Nice to see you again. So please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your piece. Uh, He's the first year PhD student um, in Tsinghua University Fine and Art Department. Yes, right. And I'm the second year. <laughs> okay, <laughs> awesome. And tell us about a little bit about these, this fan painting. Okay. His tutor um, gather around a group of students um, because he's very interested in the painting which is created by Song Dynasty. It's like um, five or six, over five hundred years, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Of yeah. course. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. No, I got that from last Monday. Don't worry. I did my research. <laughs> and and I, everybody believes that this painting is very special, yeah. uh, and they want to create something special. How to show them to the publics? So then the genius idea was to create an interaction with a little sculpture, which is like um, the real painting, okay, yes, like a public sculpture. Okay. And we can interact with it. Yay! Okay, let's try it. So, <laughs> please, okay, so basically it's touch screen yeah. and touch. And then changed. And then it changes. So that's the fan. And then we okay. go into the fan itself. And now the fan comes alive. Yeah. <laughs> Now we're in this virtual world. This is the virtual world, and this is the, the interpretation that the artist got yes. from the fan, right? Yes. yes. Right. So tell us a little bit about this, and also show me what to do. Uh, you can just touch the screen. Touch the screen. You can control the skeleton. Nice. So I'm touching the screen, and yes. <laughs> that's so cool. Then here, it has a line. When you touch it, oh. you will have a 
dance. <laughs> nice. It does its own dance. Um, it's crushed. Amazing. That is so cool. Brilliant. And there's a little uh, trivia here. So our artist here is into dancing. So that is why uh, his skeleton dances. Am I right? <laughs> So his dance moves uh, were inspired by your own dance moves, right? Yes. <laughs> awesome. And there's also actually also another uh, message behind this piece, right? Something to do with life and death. Is that correct? Uh,最关键词就是，这看起来好像是小的那个骷髅是被操作的，但实际上小的是活着，大的那个才是被操作的。就是讲说我们根本就不知道这个呃叫什么？对对。And uh, in this painting, it looks like that the small guy was controlled by the big one, but actually it's the small one that alive. That sh that that one is the real uh, living beings. Yeah. The bigger one, the bigger one is a dead one. So in real life, you just can't tell. Sometimes we were controlled by something else, but that means we're alive. Something bigger than us, they probably just have no life at all. So it's like a life life story behind it. And just one more time for our viewers, if you've missed it, this is what happens. So you press the touch screen, this is the fan, original fan painting, and then the fan comes to life. And then we have what we discussed earlier, where's the big skeleton and the small skeleton, and basically he's a puppet, and it moves. How cool is that? And then I think this is the rope. If we cut it, it breaks down into dancing. <laughs> Check it out. Come on, come on. One more time. Go. One more time. Oh, really? Okay. Not too hard. And how do we kill it? <laughs> Again. Oh, there we go. And that's that. Thank you so much. This little one is actually talking, and he thinks he talks. He's the actual living one. Oh. That big one is just like a model. It's like a fake. Right. And just before we move on, so was it a hard piece to put together? Uh, were there any? Yeah. It's not that difficult because uh, it could be done in a really fast time and has the best effect. Yeah. All right. And what is it like for you to be able to show this piece in a digital way? What does it mean and why is it better, do you think? They want to make the uh, artifact more funny, more entertaining, to, to uh, more attractive, yeah. to especially to kids. Yeah. Because when there's an illustration, they probably just go around, but by this way, they'll really play and interact with it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much and lovely to see you again. All right, take care. Let's move on to the next one. It's very true, you know, Betty. I, I've, this is my second time here and I've seen all the children run to this piece because they can play with it. They like love the whole skeleton it's situation. Very and actually, painting. It's very different Absolutely. from a painting. It's very different from a painting. And you're teaching and educating your young children, this young generation, about yes. traditional culture, which is great. Uh, so this one is working not working yet we have to wait you know it it would blows in five minutes yeah. every five minutes so, yeah. yeah yeah that's the, the story behind it okay we'll just uh, take a look at it but it's not in action at the moment mm -hmm. it's at uh, resting <laughs> but they want to show that waiting is very worthy oh. you have to wait for some beautiful things to happen to bloom <laughs> oh I love that yeah. that's why it just only blows in Every five minutes, yeah. So in this exhibition, not only do you get to see very interesting digital uh, Chinese culture, but also you get to learn life lessons as well, which yes. is pretty cool. <laughs> yes. Which is so cool. deep. <laughs> so deep, yeah. Uh, we have projectors here as well. With, um, what, tell us a little bit about this. Um, this is the digital video shows that Confucius' footstep 
Uh, basically, it's a video here, but yeah. it's an uh, actually interactive project on the iPad. Yeah. Um, Confucius is a very famous um, yes. ancient teacher, and uh, the, the student in the information art, they built these videos. Not only videos, you can see there are modules, there are sceneries they have to create, and there are actions they have to build. And by this way, Confucius' story is more active, it's more alive, it's more vivid to every children. Yeah. He's not only an ancient uh, great man on the textbook. Yes. Oh, brilliant. Come to life again. Um, and this part is also very interesting. It's very different because it's actually hand-crafted papers yes. with uh, traditional designs. Is that correct? Um, it's the traditional design handmade. The, the skill is traditional, but we're using the modern way to preserve this culture again. So um, in this museum, you can see uh, every visitor who comes to that museum will see how the um, hand workers, how they really work. Yeah. And then here on the, on, on the wall, we can actually see how they work. Zoom in for us, how they created and made and produced the papers, is that correct? Yes. And uh, the student, they create illustrators like this, paintings like this, like small comics books to tell their stories because by this way we can print them on the paper and the, the paper could travel around all the illustration, all the images could travel on the website so by this way we bring the unseen or the traditional the behind the scenes, it's a yes. basically behind the scenes but now work. you can see them exactly. and, and then and you see the finished product here yeah. and every product was created to preserve this kind of culture and to also to spread this kind of traditional skills all around. Very beautiful, very beautiful. Okay, great, let's move on yes. to this part here. So Betty, tell us a little bit, you're a PhD student here. How's your experience uh, being able to create art here? Um, I think um, a PhD student for uh, in information art is really yes. Uh, fascinating. We have to work with science, computer aspects, illustrators, artists, and every different kind of professions that mix together. Nice. So, yeah. nice. so a lot of collaborative work happens yes. here. Right. Yes, all done by the group work, not only by an individual. It's all group works. That's great. Okay, which moves us to our next project this here. It's called um, Yu Fei. You can see. Uh, Chinese yin and yang culture um, and it's very ancient Chinese ethics so you can see uh, if there are too much yang they will turn into so the yang is the black yang is the white yang is the white and yin is, is the black and uh, yeah if we say there are too much yang they will turn into yin we say uh, yang duo zi yi but you can see they are black fish yes. how they move if there's sound they would come to the sounds. Let me move to this. Okay. Brings hair, and the blackfish would follow the sound. Comes towards the sound. Yes. And every time we shakes, yeah, it's too loud. Sorry. Every time we shakes, more blackfish would come. Okay. Let's try that. So yeah. if we move to another direction. Here. Come, blackfish. There we go. There's a blackfish, and. And this thing, uh, this scene means uh, more black fishes come together, more yin is built up, built up by yin. So let me just wait for a second. Come, 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 come. So in lifetime, we say if there's too much yin, the yin would crush. Then crush yin to what? Into yang. So you can then wait. And then the lights change and it becomes pitch black, and then the white fish. Yes. And the blackfish will turn into a round. See, I, I think. I What's the circle? Is the circle? Uh, the circle means the yin and yang balance. Yin yang ping hang. Yin and yang balance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, in ancient Chinese tradition, we believe that this world was built by a harmonious round. Do you see the tai chi tu? Uh, it's the belt divided into the blackfish and the white fish. That shows the two different sides of everything in this world. Fish. Yeah. And the fish, what does the fish symbolize? Oh, the fish symbolizes the image itself. It, it, uh, in the image, the yin and yang actually looks like a fish. 
and they used that meaning and put a real fish figure in this yeah, artifact. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And a little bit of here before we move on to yeah. the next digital art piece. Yes. Uh, but tell us a little bit about the history of this section oh. here. This is Chinese, the most ancient Chinese character, yeah. Chinese words, handwriting. Yes, fish. Um, but in ancient time, they were created on the tortoise back, created by the fire. Uh, but in regional time, they could just be handwrite, handwrite by the uh, artist. But now they find a structure or a panel or some rules behind every literature. Now it could be recognized by the computer or be created by the computer. Because now they have rules, they have structures. And the student and the teacher that research in these groups did their work to find the, the best structure to illustrate all these words. And of course they built lots of products which has the logo and the pattern of the textile on them, yeah. it would spread this ancient Jiagu culture to every young student. As you yeah. can see there, uh, we call them rules, rulers. Yeah. You can easily build a, a Jiagu worm by these rulers. Nice. Mm -hmm. Just like that uh, Da Vinci, da Vinci, da Vinci design, design. Mm -hmm. historic, very famous piece. Mm -hmm. And that would, and with that piece, you're able to get a bird out of it. Is that correct? Um, as an idea, the just idea. the same idea, okay. using mm -hmm. the same concept. Yeah. Awesome. Great. It's amazing. Okay. And now moving on to this part of the exhibition. Your part of the exhibition. Yes. <laughs> Your yes. group's part of the exhibition. Yes, it's the group work. Okay, great. So without further ado, please explain to us your virtual reality. Art piece. Uh, a project led by our tutor. Yeah. And this is basically a combination of different varieties of Dunhuang culture. Okay. There are sculptures, there are paintings, and there are uh, lots of different ancient uh, art uh, architectures. Yeah. But in this space, we put all of their research in a virtual digital museum. So the museum does not exist in this in this world. Uh, this is some research content. Uh, uh, you can see this is shows how the how the researchers they're not artists. How the real researchers or the scientists uh, try to repair the painting because in ancient time or in the last decades, Dunhuang's painting was destroyed a little bit. Yeah. So the color is not as fresh as the original. Yeah. So they try to um, repair the the original, the damaged picture, into a fresh new one. So you can see this is the right now. This is the repaired illustration, yeah. and we build the action yes. to make it more vivid. And also, actually, a little bit more information about this. Uh, having spoken to <laughs> one of the organizers of this exhibition, what's great about this digital way? of uh, showing, showcasing uh, cultural, Chinese culture is that uh, you're preserving it, you're protecting the art pieces, so you're not seeing the real thing, yes. uh, touching it, people touching it, etc. So oh, it could... Flashlight. Yeah, so that, that could obviously damage in time, it could you know, wear out, uh, whereas in a digital way, you can actually see it, be educated by it. For thousands of times and it doesn't destroyed a little piece of it. Exactly, yes. And, you know, it, you're not so worried. It's a safety issue as well. Yes. So it's great. It's preserving traditional culture yes. in a very fun and entertaining way. Moving on to your actual virtual reality piece. So a lady's on it now. But you want to try? Do you yeah, want to yeah, try it? Yeah. Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's just uh, a lady on at the moment. But let's just explain roughly... Um, okay, right now she's... What she's seeing. Right, right now on the screen, it's just partial of her, of what has what what she's seeing now. Because when you actually wearing it, you can see the whole world around you. It's not yeah. this world anymore. Yeah. But on the screen, it shows the um, um, the instruments yeah. of ancient times on this on this painting. But the yeah. real instrument is is, is uh, on the behind is below it, and you can still hear the music. Great. Yes. And th this is the whole virtual museum. It does not exist again. Yeah. Should we try it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
让他试一下。对 ，just really quickly. Sorry. It's, okay. It's thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Do you know yeah, hold this? Yeah. Hold this. Can I try it out? Let's belong to the what? The group. The group. Sorry. Yes. Your group. Twitter. Twitter. Okay. Yeah. No. This is good. So let me interview now. What are you seeing now? <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of paintings, a lot of artifacts and relics in front of me. Can you see what I see? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you're saying that this entire room is, is a replica of the real thing? No. Or the, 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 there is not this museum in this world. So it's not a real museum. Yeah, but I can show you some real things. Okay, okay. show us the real things that you okay. guys have added in. Because it's a combination of the real world. And uh, is this the uh, is this the right? Yes. Thank you. And this is our group student group leader. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Wherever you are, nice to meet you. <laughs> we're going to the Doom. Okay, we're going to the Doom. Uh, yeah. Am I holding it? Oh, okay. That's uh, turn to your back. Yeah. Okay. Do you see the, the angels? Oh, yes. Now we're going to see. Okay, is this the real thing? Yes. Ah. This is the real thing. Do I have to walk through? Oh, sorry. sorry. Now you're fine. Oh, there we go. And I'm going forward. <laughs> okay. Great okay, start. Now you're inside. Oh, wow. What do you see? Okay, the inside of this do? The inside of the room? It's very pretty. Um, so all of these uh, paintings. paintings on the wall are real. Are real. So yeah. this is exactly what you would see in the real thing. Um, yeah. But I think in the real world, they does not have such strong lights. Okay. That's yeah. why the, this virtual way is much better than to see the real world. When you see this okay. real world, the, the painting may wear, might wear out. Yes. And you cannot use the flashlight. Yeah. You cannot stay so close. But by this way, you can, oh, you can really get as closer as you might want. Do I walk this way? Yes. Can I walk this way? Can go through. Okay, I'm not going to step on anyone. You're entering a, a door. I'm entering a door. Out. We're going out. And look up. Look up. Uh, a little bit forward. Stop, stop, stop. Oh. Do you see there's something changing? Yes. Yes. This is the repaired painting on the roof. Because inside the doom, the roof was destroyed, and now you can see the roof repaired, repaired, so it's as fresh as new, as beautiful as it was originally created. Yeah, and something's flying on the side. Uh, flying, the right? The lady? Yeah. The it's lady's Phaethian. Okay, cool. Uh, it's like um, ancient gods. Goddess. Ah, oh, goddesses. Yeah, goddesses. Yeah. In Dunhuang's culture. Great. I presume that's not real. <laughs> it's not available on the real thing. <laughs> awesome. Brilliant. Stunning. Wow. Hope I didn't hurt anyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That was brilliant. That is such an experience. Definitely virtual reality gives a different type of experience, but I absolutely understand what you mean in terms of the actual beauty, it's preserved in a different way. Yes. Uh, but obviously it's not real, but some parts are, right? From the real yes. thing. The dome is real. And all, everything inside is not. Yeah, everything around the museum is not. The dome is real. I have to say, great imagination and creativity Thank to you. actually you know, put things in there. Yes. Yeah. Because well, uh, we do not only create, we also preserve and show how the scientists real work. So we basically put their real works all together. Yeah. And by this? Yes. Let's do this one. This one's really cool. So this is an art projected screen. onto yeah onto a screen. And she's Fatian, which we mentioned before. She's yeah. the goddess. And how she danced was really uh, uh, recorded from a real dancer, which is a professional dancer, knows the Dunhuang dance. And we use the motion sensor capture machine techniques to, to duplicate her dance and then mix the dance with the model all together. And now you can see a Fei Tian dancing in the real world. And the screen has a very special layer behind it. That's why we can we do not absolutely see through. We can see some reflections. Yes. I mean, I hope everyone at home or everybody watching can actually see how amazing, how beautiful it looks. 
because uh, it has the small and very very sparkly, lights. very smooth, very and pretty so with your real eyes. Yes. That's so nice. That that's how we say it combines the virtual world and the real world all together by this kind of projection. Okay, and now we're coming to our last piece that we're going to show you from this exhibition. And we're going to invite uh, one of the artists. Also a student here? No, oh. she's, a, she's like a tutor. Oh, she's a tutor? Oh, amazing! Yeah. <laughs> so Very please senior. introduce yourselves to oh, us. Yeah. Oh. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Chloe. I am the, one of the curators and the, uh, the team for the production of the Saint Teresa, and we are also the researchers for the Digital Yuan Yuan project. And I'm from Canada, so I fly back just for it because it is that amazing. Awesome. It is pretty amazing, and we're just about to show you. But before we go in, let's uh, entice the viewers even more. Uh, tell us a little bit about the background of this piece. Yes, absolutely. So uh, the piece is basically just, uh, we show a fracture yeah. of what the, we call the Old Summer Palace. And then uh, the Old Summer Palace, it's an uh, imperial garden back in the Qing Dynasty. Yeah. And it has uh, been super famous and it was called the Garden of Everything back then. So this was a huge complex that really collects all of the things that at the times, but then it was uh, it basically it was destroyed in the war, and then right now it's an archaeological park. Yeah. So there has always been a need for the people to see it, to see it. Well, what is so beautiful, and why there's so many legends about it? Because you can't access it right you now. You can access it, but you can only see the rubbles. You can only see the rubbles. You can see the ruins. So you don't know what it you actually. You don't know what it actually looked like. So that's why, you know, almost 20 years ago, uh, Professor Guo Dai Hong from the Tsinghua University, she started the program as a research, uh, research project to study, truly study what the Yuan Ming Yuan maybe looked like. And then the entire theme of that project was to help the general public to get to know this entire site, to appreciate its beauty and to show its beauty once more. Right. So basically we took the first 10 years to do all the archival research, all the very multidisciplinary studies, and then we started to compile those into digital reconstruction of the site. And that's in 1990, uh, that's in 2009. And that has already been 10 years of studies then. So since 2009, we started the digital reconstruction process. And up to today, it's around 60% of the whole site. And it's not just the architectural appearance. Everything that we capture is also have a time dimension. So Yumi Manbi flourished for 150 years. And we're also trying to capture the different evolutions throughout times. And I think that's one of the beauty of the time too. Okay, enough talking. Yeah. I think it's time to see this awesome piece of digital artwork. And, and yeah. just a little, a little, yeah, a little anecdote that we're trying to put it before. So we're yeah. really trying to capture people's options here. And you see that we answer this question at the very beginning and say, what is the first thing that come up to their mind? Yeah. So most of the people associate them with the ruins, with the disasters. And then we're going to see what they come afterwards. After we see the show, what's up? So we are we ready to go in? Are we ready? Oh, okay. Let's let's um yeah. let's try it. So okay. we're mentioning you and me. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Well, in my mind, obviously it's ruins. Yeah, I think it would be ruins for sure. Mm -hmm. So let's add another piece here. I can only remember the history. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And the idea is that that might change if by the yeah, time we get out. Probably. Yeah, so it's quite like busy in there right now, yeah. but it is stunning. Let's 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 yeah. get in. Is it ready? Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean you're just entering the most magnificent scene, the yeah. rebirth process. Okay, here we All go. So sides. let's pan the camera so around. Just turn it around and just you follow me. Exactly. Look how beautiful this is. Let's just appreciate it for a good couple of minutes. Yeah. So what are we seeing at the moment? Though? Right now you're seeing uh, Haiyan Tang in the Western complex. And so uh, the Western complex is a, a session of European style gardens 
inside of Yan Yuan, and you can see that it's by Baroque and Rococo style. And this is where the most prominent 12 zodiac water clock taking place. And you know, we're trying to use this really familiar site to connect people with Yan Yuan. Great. And there's quite a few people around us, but you know, let's a couple, give it a couple more minutes before we close and see what's yeah. the next piece after this. Uh, so we're just so we're reaching the end of the show, oh, and really next okay. we're gonna start it over again. So you can see the entire thing and really appreciate it. Yeah, oh, we absolutely perfect. Love awesome. It. And what's cool about this as well is the interactivity oh, yes. of it, of course, yes. that I can't be missing. Yes. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that before we try it ourselves. Yeah. So uh, what we're really trying to do is that we're trying to bring people to this immersive environment. Yeah. So that they're not just, ah, go. so here we go. Okay, there we go. Floor. If we just pan okay. to the floor, there okay. you go. Uh -huh. So here that we're really trying to lure people to come in and then enjoy the sights and then breaking the, you know, it's almost like an ice breaking, uh, ice breaking moment. So the entire floor is interactive. So when people come and when they walk on it, they can gradually reveal the ruins underneath. It's almost like a walking archaeology. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So let's just uh, get the cameraman to follow Betty's footsteps so you can see exactly what Go means by it. So what we're seeing now is the revealing. Yeah, we're seeing the revealing of the ruined sites of the site that we're representing, which is high end. Yeah, nice. And uh, what, what are we seeing on screen at the moment? So at this moment, it was as if you're unborn. So you are in this really, you know, cosmetic environment. Yeah. Everything is uncertain. You yeah. don't know what's going to come. So yes. you're waiting for that moment of realization. And that's why it's dark. Exactly. And with the sparkling of yes. lights, you know, it's almost like a fraction and a dust of history. Yeah. And we're trying to be a little bit poetic. Yeah. And yeah. also it gives the, the, the person who's here, the people here, a little bit of excitement of what's going to happen, yes. what's going to come out. Yes. That's the feeling I got when I first oh, came. And I was like, what's going to happen? Oh, here we go. And now it's happening. It's happening. Tell us what's happening. <laughs> so now you will start to see that the entire ruins we're revealing in front of you and here we're using 360 degree camera so that you are fully captured in the panoramic view yeah. and here we're trying to use this entire video and not just showcase the beauty of the site but also to show you exactly the process of digital reconstruction okay. so here that we're mimicking the laser scanning process after we're scanning the process after we're scanning the site the entire site becomes digitized and then we can archive those informations, then we can document those uh, different fragments. And here is how we're using the computer technology to reassemble the missing fragments on site in the virtual space. And this is a non-intrusive way, so that here that you can see that all those are what is exist on site today. And then in a computer, we just graph, uh, we basically we make all the models and then we match them together and place them back to their original space. And this is a way that we can also verify our past study to see if everything is accurate and authentic. And this is the Summer Palace, right? This is the Summer Palace. And then right now, as you can see, that those are really intricately designed and then very vibrantly colored uh, components that are flying on the screen. And those are the glazed tiles that we found on the archaeological site wow. of Yuan Mingyue. And then um, one thing that really uh, inspired us is that when we see the ruins today, we often see it as a white. Yeah. as a marble space and then today when we see those glazed tiles we think that they're absolutely vibrant so there may be the speculation that the building is colorful so we went to the extent of research and we definitely found the evidence that the, the photographer who took the first photographs of Yuan Mimia, he wrote in his diary that under the blue sky of Beijing the building shines like a rainbow so this is basically his true depiction of what the colorful building may be. Yeah. And from those, we use them as a clue to decipher the mystery of a color. So you can see here, that was the first ever photograph taken of Yamir, although it's already after the fire. Yeah. But what we try to do is to replace those fragments back to their original place. 
and when they're fitting back, they provide a clue to what other fragments may look like. And through this, we, uh, we sort of decipher the color puzzles of the site. And so I love this color. <laughs> yeah, we love it yeah. too. <laughs> We're really proud of this movie, yeah. actually. So this is basically just show that the extent of archival research that goes in, and it's coming from different sources. The one that we just stepped on is actually a blueprint coming from Italy. So the sources aren't just China, but it's from abroad. And this is a way how we can not only just you know reconstruct the exterior, but the interior as well. Now, this is a moment of silence here. And then, so another big thing is going to happen. Another big thing? Another one? <laughs> another one. What else is going to happen? Right now, we are inside the water reservoir okay. of this fountain. So to power up a fountain as big as this size, they need a really big water resources. Right. And this water reservoir is in fact five meters deep. It's even deeper right now. So what we are going to see right now is following the rhythm of the water, we're seeing the entire rebirth of the site. And then they actually, they, this, this fountain is actually a clock. It's telling the time. So each animal is symbolic to a time. And when it was that certain time, it will pour water. So right now we're at noon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Can I just say, this for me is one of the highlights of this digital experience here at Tsinghua University. It's fascinating because you only, no, no, it's, I mean, 10 years of work. You, you, you and the 20 years of work, apologies, 20 years of work, including all the research work. How does the team feel that it's all come to life and what has been the reaction from this piece? We are very excited, of yeah. course. We're absolutely Let's walk out so we can, I can actually see us. Yes. But yeah, this was the. So perhaps we can walk to the exhibition area? Yeah, okay, sure. Well, yeah. The, yeah. So. We are super excited because just look at the number here. That's all the data that we accumulated for this project. Yes. And it's just a really preliminary count. But to be able to see what this is coming, and then I think that we're fulfilling, uh, also realizing the dream that Professor Guo first started the project, is to show people what Yuan Yuan looks like. And I think that from people's reaction, we're really we are so glad to see everyone because I, I think that most of the people they watch it three or four times. Like the first time they were standing in the back and they would film it. And then they were gradually start to walk in and experience it and they got sink into it and they didn't realize that they've been watching it for three times. Yeah. And I've been seeing that you know people come back with friends and they say that this is amazing that you guys should see it too. Yeah. So I think it's I mean, for us, we've been working on this for such a long time, so it's a gradually process. Yeah. So we, we, are, we are all sure that it's going to come. Oh, but then, I mean, when it really comes, it's still quite emotional, I think. Yeah. And then she also, yes. in my yeah. opinion, oh, and then yes. she joins the discussions. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, idea creations sometimes we discuss yeah. together. Yeah. And thank you for bringing everyone's fantasy into this new oh, world. Yes, yeah. it's really a fantasy. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. thank you to both of you for joining us at, in this pleasure. live stream. It's uh, and it's such an honor to be able to showcase your work here at CGTN. Thank you very much to you guys thank you for and, us. and for touring us around as well. Uh, but yeah, sadly, we're coming to an end. We'll be back with you. We'll be coming to an end. Apologies for the, uh, uh, the beginning earlier. But what I've learned about this experience is basically in an ancient times, uh, they used a, a, you know, a fire to build iron. They, uh, you know, farmers used wheat and rice to create a cultural heritage, to create cultural achievements like paintings and artifacts and relics. And today, in this digital age, uh, you know, te technology has been used to preserve and protect this uh, cultural heritage that they've inherited from their forefathers. And what an honor uh, for me to be able to experience that here today. And obviously, hope you've enjoyed it as well. I'm Jenny Cortez Ibanez, and you've been watching a live stream here at CGTM. Till next time. Bye-bye.